Hi everybody, Synthetic Black here, and today we're going to be looking at setting up Blender for use with 3D printing. Now I'm focusing primarily on resin printing with the uh, Anycubic Photon. Uh, FDM printing is not something I have a ton of experience with, at least not recently. Uh, so this is geared primarily towards that, some vital settings that I use, helpful tips, as well as some best practice. So with that, we're going to get started. Now this is not about how to use Blender in general. There are a lot of other great tutorials out there for that. This is all about just the settings in general. So, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just get rid of everything. Uh, we're going to double tap A with our cursor right here uh, in the main window and we're going to hit X to delete. I'm going to confirm that. The very first thing I want to do is I want to go get rid of uh, some problems with unit scaling. Now units are essentially the fundamental measurement used inside of a scene. So in this case by default it's set to metric. We're going to go down here to unit scale and we're going to set this to 0 .001 and we're going to give our base length to millimeters. You're going to see that's going to really mess with the grid here, and we actually like our grid. It's pretty important for a lot of functions inside of Blender, especially snapping. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in to our specific settings right here for our grid, and we're going to set our scale to 0 0.001. Now, it looks like nothing happened, but importantly, uh, now our basic unit is one millimeter by one millimeter by one millimeter. To show you what that means, I'll add a default cube. So I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to add a cube. If I bring up my end panel by hitting N, you're going to see that my scale is one one one, so that's fine. And my dimensions are two millimeter by two millimeter by two millimeter. And that's standard for Blender. It creates something in the center with a little bit of material on either side. So that's, that's great right there, that's, that's what we want. What I like to do next is set up a default uh, cube environment for my actual uh, modeling environment. So I'd like to go, all right, well, what's the volume I'm working in so that I can always keep in mind the right size that I'm working with precisely. So I'm gonna tab into edit mode with my cube selected. And I'm just going to move this up on the z-axis by one unit. And what that does is it actually just puts my cube right on the floor of the grid. And that's what I want. Now, I'm going to break something here in order to show you how to fix it. So, I'm going to go with the volume of the anycubic photon. And that is uh, 115 millimeters. 115. Oops. That one one five. Whoop. Zoom out by one fifty five tall. Well, why? Oop. That's not right. A little sticky there. Yeah, we'll fix that. It's actually sixty five tall. I'm getting my math wrong. Sixty five millimeters by one. 55 tall. And that's our build volume. Right now, while I'm working, I don't particularly want uh, to have to select this and move it around. So I'm going to come over here to our scene collection and I'm going to go to my filter options and turn on selections. And I'm going to uncheck this so that we can't actually select this object anywhere other than this window. And for fun, I'm going to name it any cubic volume. Right, so now that's labeled. Now this doesn't do me a lot of good if I can't see into it you know, and see essentially what I'm modeling. So what I like to do next is go to its display options or its viewport display and change it from textured to bounds. I could do wired, I prefer bounds. And now I know exactly how big of the space I'm working in inside of my volume. Now, 
there is a problem if this were the object that I was was exporting. I'm going to show you here. I've changed the dimensions here, but it's also upset the scale. And when you're when you're moving objects between different 3D programs, the scale really matters. So we need to reset this to one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit um, select our volume. We're going to hit Control A, and we're going to reset or apply all transforms. Really, it's just the scale. As a matter of course, I like to do all transforms. Got to make sure that's selected here. Hang on. There we go. Apply all transforms, and we'll deselect that. Now this is one again. So this is really handy. Um, it gives you an idea of what you're working with. Now, when I very first set up Blender to work with the AnyCubic Photon, one of the questions I had was how big are you know the pixels? So it involves a little bit of math, but I'll see if I can help you visualize it. This right here is one cube. We'll just go ahead and center that. And we'll just delete it. Redo our cursor to world origin and reset. There we go. So this is our cube. It is a, a two millimeter by two millimeter cube. I'm just gonna zoom in here. I'm gonna scale it to 0.5. Now it's a one by one by one. This is one millimeter. This is tiny. In fact though, any cubic works in layers and pixel sizes. So it's actually quite a bit smaller than this. So we're looking at just the tiniest section, probably about this big as your fundamental units. You have a lot of wiggle room in how you model this. Now here again, we want to keep in mind the scale factor here. If you start editing this in terms of its size and its proportion, again, I just want to show you, resizing it here messes with it quite a bit. So as a habit, it's a good idea to scale and edit the object only in edit mode. So you hit tab, and you can scale it up as high as you want, and that scale is still zero. So that's essentially the basics. The next thing I want to show you is a little bit about um, intersection and how that works inside of Blender at least with the anti-cubic photon. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab this and I'm gonna rotate it out and around like this. And we're just gonna go up a little bit. We're gonna duplicate this. Now, in a lot of other applications and perhaps for FDM printing, it is not advisable to have intersecting geometry like this. You'd actually wanna use a Boolean modifier to fuse it together if you so desired. Um, in this case, for resin printing, that's not necessary, at least not as I've come across it. This is completely acceptable. This will print just fine. So that generally helps uh, quite a bit in, in seeing what's going on. And that's most of what you need to know when it comes time to export this out. Uh, you might have a few questions about you know best practices for that. We'll just go to export. And in this case, we're looking for STL. You can set your location and all your other fun settings. In the version of Blender that I'm using over here, we have all of our settings and our scale is zero, Y up. And we're going to apply any modifiers. If you had any like smoothing modifiers or anything like that, you want to check that so that's applied. Um, you would also want to make sure that you have selection only. Uh, remember, in this case, I have two objects in here. I've got my anycubic volume and my object itself. So I only want the thing that I've actually selected. And then you export your STL, and you're done. You can bring it into to two box, and it works great. So uh, again, you know, this is a, a different video from what I normally do. But uh, someone had asked me a few questions about Blender and, and how to set it up, and I couldn't find a lot of good information for this. So I hope that you find this helpful, and uh, I hope that uh, you uh, share it with everyone and we get some interesting models out there. So at minimum, it's another option for you other than Mesh Mixer, uh, and I really enjoy using this program a lot. There's a huge amount of control. There's lots of benefits that I didn't go over in this video, but um, we can 
talk about that later. Uh, if you do have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. Uh, likes are very much appreciated on these videos. Um, obviously, if you want to see more content like this, just go ahead and hit subscribe, ring that bell. You can get all the other content I put out. I do release about once a week, um, and I hope you enjoy it, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Have a great one.